So uh, we might be looking at this function. Okay. Got two to the x. I don't know the derivative of that. Okay. I know e to the x. Right. Exponential functions with base e. Um, I know how to handle those, but this is base something else, and right now I'm in the dark. So just taking account of things I know. Right? I know that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of 2 to the x, I don't know. I know that it's going to be 2 to the x times some number. We kind of got that when we were finding out the magic of e. But uh, 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 5 to the x, 100 to the x, I don't know about those. And now thanks to the chain rule, I also know a little bit more than just plain old e to the x. I know that the derivative of e to the whatever is e to the whatever times the derivative of that whatever. The derivative of e to the something is e to the something d something. So more complicated expressions with base e, I'm happy with. Or happier than I used to be. So here's a question that I might ask myself. Can I change the base of this exponential function? It's 2 to the x. Can I write... 2 to the x as an exponential expression of in e. Right? I don't like 2 to the x. Can I write e to the something instead of 2 to the something? Now, the something will probably have to change, right? Because 2 to the x and e to the x, they're not the same thing. But can 2 to the x be written as e to the some stuff? Two to the x is e to the what? Uh, here's a helpful fact. The inverse of e to the x is the natural log of x. So if I remember that bit, I know that this e to the x and the natural log of x function, they kind of cancel each other out. right? If you compose them, they kind of undo each other. So that means that I can kind of introduce an exponential function as much as I want to, as long as I kind of undo it, right? Multiplying by one will not change a function, and we have seen time and time again that that is crazy helpful algebraically, right? If you multiply by the right one, you can introduce helpful factors into an expression. And so that's what we're going to do here. Two to the x is really e to the natural log of two to the x. So I haven't changed it at all, but now I have a base e instead of a base 2. It's just that my exponent is natural log of 2 to the x, which is kind of ugly. Barf-o-rama, right? Puke. Um, there, there's some nice properties of the natural log, though. Right? If I have an exponent inside of a logarithm, then that exponent can be written as a coefficient. So this is really just e to the x times natural log of 2. Remember the natural log of something raised to, the, raised to a power, right? Exponents inside of natural logs can be brought out as coefficients. Right? The idea here is natural log of a to the b is b natural log a, and vice versa. If you have a coefficient in front of a natural log, you can move it inside of the natural log by making it a by making it an exponent. So this is a property of natural logs with which we should be familiar, and we are using it here so that instead of thinking about a natural log of a complicated function, I'm thinking about x times the natural log of two. And what's awesome about this is that the natural log of two is some number. It's not anything complicated. It's not changing. It's just some number. It is the number that you would raise e to the power of in order to get 2. Okay. So what? So now I might be in a place where I want to take a derivative. 
So now I'm thinking that the derivative of 2 to the x is really the derivative of e to the natural log of 2 times x. And I like this better than this because this is base e, and I know how to take care of those derivatives. This is a natural log of 2, by the way. I'll try to write bigger. So 2 to the x is really e to the natural log of 2 times x. And I'm OK with this natural log of 2 again, because the natural log of 2 is just some number. So what is that derivative? That derivative is going to be e to the natural log of 2 times x. Right? It won't change. But then I need to multiply by the derivative of that exponent. And what is the derivative of the natural log of 2 times x? Not 2, but I, yeah, so this is me evaluating the derivative. Right? So the derivative of e to the something is e to the something times the derivative of that something. Right? I'm using the chain rule here to evaluate the derivative. So e to the u, the derivative is e to the u du. I need to multiply by its derivative. So here's the u prime coming in. The derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of 3x is 3. The derivative of pi x is pi, right? Pi is just a number, just like 3 and 2. The derivative of root 2x is, it's going to follow this pattern, root 2, right? Root 2, also just a number. Natural log of 2, just the number. So it should just be natural log of 2. Two x, the derivative is two. Three x, the derivative is three. Pi x, the derivative is pi. Root two x, the derivative is root two. Natural log of two x, the derivative is natural log of two. It's a real number, just like any other number. Negative four x, the derivative is negative four. Now, if the coefficient were variable, then this wouldn't be true. But all of these are just real numbers, right? Natural log of two is some number. True fact, if you plugged it into a calculator, it would be about 0 0.69, which may sound familiar because we talked about it earlier in class. So e to the natural log of 2 times x, we know that that's just 2 to the x. So again, this expression is just 2 to the x in hiding, but then I've got to multiply by the natural log of 2. So there's that constant number, right? I knew that 2 to the x was going to turn into 2 to the x times some number. But now I know that this some number is really the natural log of 2. I know what that some number is. In fact, if a is bigger than 0, then a to the x, its derivative is a to the x natural log of a. So here's a general rule for all exponential functions, even e to the x. e to the x times the natural log of e. But what's the natural log of e? It's 1, right? e to what power is e? e to the first power is e. So this is e to the x times 1, which is e to the x. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. It follows this rule also. But 
here's a way for us to talk about all, all a to the x's. So here's another, another set of derivatives that we know. So we know power functions, x to the n types of things, right? x to the 10th, x to the 1 half, x to the negative 3, x squared. We know e to the x, it's our favorite. It's the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Uh, but we also know 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 4 to the x, 100 to the x. Those derivatives will look almost exactly the same, but you'll have to multiply by this constant number, the natural log of the base. That's the only big difference. You won't see a lot of this in general uh, because people tend to work in base E because there's this really nice property. Um, but you may see it just because that base is easier to work in. Um, it's good to Questions about this true fact? Okay. All right. Um, let's see an example really quickly. Starting with the final answer, you can go 2 to the x times ln of 2. Yes. We're going to have to solve for ln of 2. I mean, there's nothing to solve for, right? It's a statement of. Yes. I mean, it's an exact thing. Oh, yeah. But natural log of 2 is an exact expression. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I, I'm perfectly happy with exact expressions. I kind of prefer them to decimal approximations. So in general, I would rather see natural log of 2 than 0 0.69. I'd rather see pi than 3.14. I'd rather see square root of 2 instead of 1.2, 1 1.7, whatever it is. 1.2, right? No. No, that's, that's less than one half, one and a half when you square it. That's got to be, that's got to be bigger. It's got to be 1.4 something. Uh, it's 1.4 something. 1.4 and change. Because 14 squared is 196. So that, that's getting you close to 2. 1.41. There we are. All right, so root 2. I'd rather see root 2 than 1.41. Uh, I really like exact things more than I like inexact things. And anybody with a calculator can come in behind you and just punch in natural log of 2 into a calculator if they're worried about it. So in general, you see stuff um, you see stuff like pi, root 5, natural log of 2, right? natural log of 1 half, uh, right? uh, 3 root 2. Right? All of these are perfectly good expressions that are fine the way that they are. So if you combine them in other other expressions, I don't need decimal results or approximations. Um, it's worth noting that the natural log of one half is the same thing as negative natural log of two, uh, because that's natural log of two to the negative first power, and the exponent can be brought out. So. So uh, natural log of one third is negative natural log of three, um, or natural log of three halves. You could write, if you really wanted to, as natural log of three minus the natural log of two. Oop, there we are. Because quotients inside of natural logs can be written as differences of logs. So this is a property of the natural logs that you may remember. Um, in general, I'm more prone to move from here to here because natural log of 3 halves is a single expression. Um, but if you really like integers, then this might be more shiny to you. So either of these is fine. Um, but if one day you come across an answer in the back of the book that doesn't match the answer that you have written, and you freak out a, a little bit, remember the way that these natural logs work. Um, they might have been, one of these properties might have been used in order to get the answer that's in the back of the book if you're checking your answer. But yeah, I like these exact expressions, so we won't need to calculate. Um,
So here's a question. What's f prime of x if f of x is x cubed times 3 to the x? Where might I start? That sounds great. What are we using here? Yeah, we're using the product rule, right? This is a product of two functions. I have x cubed times 3 to the x. And I like each of these functions individually, but now that I'm multiplying them together, I'm going to need to use the product rule in order to find their derivative. So I take the derivative of the first factor, 3x squared. It's the derivative of x cubed. And I will leave the second factor alone. It's just 3 to the x. And then I will add, I leave the first factor alone, and I take the derivative of the second factor. So I've taken the derivative of x cubed first and left the second one alone. And then I've taken the derivative of 3 to the x, and I've left x cubed alone. And this is probably fine. Um, if I were really anxious, uh, maybe I would notice that I have a 3 to the x and a 3 to the x, and there are two x's that are common factors, so this will factor pretty nicely if I really want it to. Um, something like x squared, 3 to the x, and then I'd be left with 3 plus natural log of 3x. <laughs> You don't have to. Um, if I were wanting to solve for zero here, like if I wanted to know, oh, when is f prime of x equal to zero, factoring would be very helpful. But if I'm not solving an equation here, if I'm just looking for an expression that describes f prime of x, this is probably fine. Um, there is a, a kind of like hiccup here in kind of like general for writing. Um, usually I don't write x times 2 this way. Right? Instead, I write 2x. Hold on. Get a firm break here. I like to write my real number factors as coefficients in front of the x's. But with natural logs, it gets kind of funnier. Right? So if I have x times the natural log of 3, you might think we'll write natural log of 3 times x because here's a real number and I'm multiplying it by a variable. Sometimes we prefer this notation. Why would we like th x natural log of 3 instead of ln 3x? Yeah, exactly. Um, if I were to write ln 3 times x, I might get confused about whether this x is inside of the natural log or not. Right? Natural log of 3x is not the same as natural log of 3 times x. And this is kind of ambiguous as to which of these two it might be. So with natural logs, we usually write power functions in front of them. Um, but if you're very clear about what's inside the function and what's outside the function, then you don't have that to worry about. But if you want to write something like just natural log 3, then you can do that best by writing x natural log 3. The 3 is inside the natural log, and the x is being multiplied by it. And then you don't have to worry about the parentheses as much. There are these kind of like mathematical conventions about the way that we write things, and it's almost always for clarity, but it's worth asking yourself, like, is it worth it? Or what's really happening here? Just like the way that you would in an English class, right? There are reasons why we don't phrase certain expressions in specific ways because they make them harder to understand. Um, like 
page one in uh, Shrunk and White has to do with uh, pluralization of uh, and of possess of possessives or possessives of plurals, right? And so, you know, if something ends in an S and you want to pluralize it. What happens? And so things like Moses, who is a singular person, and you wanted to talk about his staff, saying something like Moses's staff suddenly becomes weird, right? Because do you put an apostrophe at the end of it because it's S apostrophe, or do you write S apostrophe S because it's just a singular guy? Instead, you just try to anno you try to avoid that type of thing. You say things like the staff of Moses instead of saying Moses' staff. This is kind of along the same lines. Right? Um, mathematics, especially this part of mathematics, the algebra of it, a lot of it is it's communication. I want to be able to communicate with everybody that I mean x times the natural log of 3, and this might be the best way to write that, whereas x times 2, 2x is maybe the better way to write. The trouble here is that I might get confused with x squared. So anyway, a note about notation.